where she was the first ordained cantor to graduate with the newly offered Master in Sacred Music in 1986. She has served as cantor of congregations in Chicago and St. Louis, New York and New Hampshire, and has engaged in a multitude of rich pastoral and professional experiences, including educating students of all ages, officiating at life cycle events, and work in hospitals and prisons. She started a preschool, uh, apparently here in this church, developed and directed religious school programs, and has been honored to share her love of Jewish music in concert and song in a variety of venues. And Amy is now going to come up and lead us in our call to worship. First, I want to say I know usually people are removing their masks in the front. I'm not doing that because I'm taking extra special care. We have in our close circle of people, just last week, uh, people are still, these friends of ours are recovering from uh, the virus, so it's still around us, and I just don't want to take any chances. So, but I will try my hardest to speak with the kind of diction that my voice teachers would have been proud of, but if I'm not, please let me know if you can't hear me. Um, I understand it's difficult uh, with masks, so, so feel free. I, I wanted to just give a little introduction to what you see in the service. It's called the Barku, which is the Jewish call to worship. Um, it's interesting that I'm going to, we have a call and response at every service where we include this prayer, whether it's a weekday or a holiday or a Shabbat service or Sabbath service. Um, but the Barhu, which is a very short one line, uh, like other prayers that we have, um, have a different melody for the season or the occasion. Well, what's, so it's not just, so we have the same text, is what I'm saying. It's not like we change the text for the call to worship. We change the melody. So why is that it's kind of a, an unusual phenomenon? Well, um, it may be interesting for you all to know that with what's going on in Ukraine, most of the Jews, a, a, a fair majority, who are in, who live in our country, today were, had fled that very area. There were a series of what they called shtetls, which were small villages of Jews, who suffered a series of what they called pogroms, or persecutions, right in that area. It was called the Pale of Settlement. Jews were only allowed to live in a certain area of Russia, which was within the Ukraine. The borders were always changing during the early 20th century, the late 19th, uh, the, the, um, the late uh, 19th century. So, but from the beginning of the time, of, time uh, of the Jewish people, I should say, Jews have, uh, we're small people, and we have enjoyed some very long periods of uh, relative peace in many countries throughout the world. But inevitably, we've been driven out. So our home, in a lot of respects, has been within the context of the book, the Hebrew Bible, and our liturgies that bind us. And you know how we, we chant melodies, lullabies to our children that are the same. We all can relate to certain melodies that we hear them, and they feel like home to us. Such is the case with our liturgy, that within that, such as just right with the call to worship, we hear the melody and we know that it's the Sabbath. We hear the Baruch Hu, the same text, but it's a different melody. We know that it's the high holiday period, or a different time. So our music within our prayer service has contained the, the messages of um, time and place. So that's just a little background. I'm going to chant this open, what our barfu is, and ask that you join me in response. <coughs> so you'll learn a little Hebrew this morning. Are you, are you up to that? <laughs> okay. 
So the, um, our call to worship on a Shabbat, a Sabbath, sounds a little like this. The leader sings, Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMorak. And then the congregation answers, and I'll sing it for you first, so I won't put you on the spot right away. <laughs> Baruch Adonai HaMorak Le'olam And I'll have you repeat each word just to say it, just to become a little familiar with each word after me, just to feel the Hebrew a little bit. So we have Baruch, Baruch, Adonai, Adonai, Hamborach, Hamborach, Leolam, Leolam, Vaed, Vaed. Your Hebrew speakers. They could do it. So let's try that just to say it one more time to feel the Hebrew. Baruch, Baruch, Adonai, Hamborach. And I've heard some good chas. <laughs> so it sounds like this, Bar for the congregation who's echoing back. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Le'olam Vahed. Do you want to try that with me? Baruch Adonai Hamborach So I'm going to chant as the leader.
to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. Behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of heavens, the earth with all that it is in it. Yet the Lord set his heart in love on your fathers and chose their offspring after them, you above all peoples, as you are this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no longer stubborn. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the fatherless and the widow, and loves the sojourner, giving him food and clothing. Love the sojourner, therefore, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and hold fast to him, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and terrifying things that your eyes have seen. Your fathers went down to Egypt, 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars of heaven. And now Amy will lead us. Shema is probably the most profound prayer in our service, um, very much at the heart of our service. And it's followed the one line that you see in Hebrew uh, and then translated into English is followed by a passage from the Hebrew Bible, which is translated loosely in the unison prayer we'll sing below, uh, that we'll say together below. But I'm going to chant the Shema, and then I'm going to chant just as it is done in our tradition, because I'm not sure if you know the Hebrew Bible is there's chant for that has developed and evolved through the centuries all the way through the whole Hebrew Bible. And so this prayer, which is called the Vehalta, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, is from the Hebrew Bible, and this is how it would be chanted as part of the chant that goes with the, the biblical chanting of the whole Hebrew Bible. So I'll chant the Shema, then I will chant the Vehata, and then I'll invite you to join me to uh, be, say the unison prayer together. Shema Yisrael Adonai
Nehemiah 9, 1 through 22. The Israelites confess their sins. On the 24th day of the same month, the Israelites gathered together, fasting and wearing sackcloth and putting dust on their heads. Those of Israelite descent had separated themselves from all foreigners. They stood in their places and confessed their sins and the sins of their ancestors. They stood where they were and read from the book of the law, book of the law of the Lord their God, for a quarter of the day, and spent another quarter in confession and in worshiping the Lord their God. Standing on the stairs of the Levites were Jeshua, Bani, Padmiah, Shabaniah, Bani, Sherebiah, Bani, and Kenan. They cried out with loud voices to the Lord their God, and the Levites. Jeshua, Kadiel, Bani, Hashbaniah, Sherebiah, Odiah, Shebaniah, and Hephiah said, Stand up and praise the Lord your God, who is from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord, you made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. You are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him out of war of the Chaldeans and named him Abraham. You found his heart faithful to you, and you made a covenant with him to give to his descendants the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Jebusites and Gerishites. You have kept your promise because you are righteous. Let us take a minute to confess our sins in silence. The confession in unison is one that Amy provided, and of course uh, we recognize ourselves. And she says that this is used at the end of the um, standing prayer. And, and in uh, their church, it's done silently, read silently. Um, but we will read it as we do in unison here. Oh God, guard my tongue from evil and my lips from speaking falsehood. Help me to ignore those who speak ill of me, and to forgive those who offend against me. Open my heart to your teachings, that I may eagerly do your will. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart find favor before you, my rock and my redeemer. O oh, you who ordain harmony in the universe, grant us peace to us, to Israel assurance of pardon comes from Psalm 103 through 12. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Let us pass the peace of God with a sign. Peace be with you.
prayer time with a scripture reading from Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an ab abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among his brothers. The prayer I'm going to read comes from our um, national officers of the United Church of Christ. Holy God, hear our prayers for all those who will die today because of the war in Ukraine and other war-torn countries all over this world. Grant them an end to the suffering of this world and eternal peace that is only found in you. We pray for the people of Ukraine, Russia, and all nations that war and bloodshed can be avoided and a new just peace can be forged out of this crisis. We ask God grant wisdom to the leaders of nations, calling them to end provocation on all sides and invest instead in the things that make for peace as called for in our faith traditions. We pray for an end to the deep insecurity and mistrust on all sides and call on leaders to build trust based not on military might or alliances but on the basis of our shared future and common humanity. <clears throat> now is a time in which past harms should be acknowledged and addressed and new partnerships can be envisioned. We pray for and call on our leaders to have the courage to take small, verifiable, and independent steps towards peace, inviting others to reciprocate. Now is time to invest in conflict resolution, diplomacy, and international cooperation, not more weapons which only escalate tension in the region. Be with those suffering in ways that we cannot. Protect them from devastation in ways those positioned in authority will not. Shield and comfort them as they confront the terror of violence that surrounds them. Hold them close to your heart and stay the hand of the enemies against them. Give us the courage and the strength to cry aloud against wickedness in high places that dare to harm others made in your image. Comfort the children and heed their cries to be saved from harm in this world. Make us a people who love our children all of our children, more than we love greed, power, and control. Overturn governments of tyranny wherever they are found. Disrupt the intentions of evil and give us power to stand against demonic forces of greed and control. Grant that peace and justice come to warring nations by the hands of those courageous enough to stand and study war no more. Let thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Today we pray for the following families and friends of these people who recently passed away. Nathan Colito, Jeff Whittaker, Valerie Adam. And we pray for these people who <coughs> be Josh Osborne, Wendy Z. and Ann Gates, Andy Payette, Rita Farrell, Phyllis Toll, Chuck Cassock, Gwen Jeffcoat, Ken Ford, Harry Chadwick, Don and Tom Chiro, Kirk Kirkus. Mark Fortbear and Lenny Fader, first two officers. Oh, I have the one that can't do all right now. Thank you. And do we have other names to raise up? I would just like to, I uh, talked to my friend uh, Wendy the other day, um, she lives in Montana, she's the mother of my former co-teacher, and I, uh, she just, by a fluke, discovered heart issues, and she's going in Tuesday for exploratory, see what's going on, but I like prayers for her son, because he lost his young wife three years ago to heart issues, so this must be bringing up. A lot of pain for him that his mom is now dealing with heart issues. So I'd like prayers from Michael Weaver and his mother. Lord, hear our prayer. Um, prayers for my daughter's um, father-in-law-to-be, who has 
has um, had his heart stopped on him in the last two weeks five times. So they've given him a monitor to try to see what stimulates that thing and see what happens when that happens. So I know he's uh, pretty scared, pretty young, and uh, so he needs our prayers. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Prayers for people to be praying. Of course. Oh, we never came to this, unfortunately. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. Hearing no other prayers, let us take a moment of silence to raise our concerns to God in private. Now let us recite the Lord's Prayer as we've been taught. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
give power to all we stand for as a community of faith. Amen. Our next hymn is also from the Chalice Number 18, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. Somebody here 
And before I knew it, I mean, within, I don't know, it was a day or two, our little, we had about 16 children, it's a fairly good sized group of destructive young toddlers. <laughs> and this church said, of course. And so we had this, here we are brand new in the community, and we have every week on Wednesday mornings the access to, to be in this sunny, gorgeous social hall. I don't know what you call, what do you call your own? Oh, Schaefer Hall. Yes, it, it, it's, it's just beautiful, and so the sun would pour in on our children, and we were there for a good few years. So I, when I talk about, uh, when I thought about talking about commonalities, I realized that I didn't want to preach to this congregation. I'm, I'm called a preacher in this, um, it, which is a very lovely, and I'm honored by that, but this congregation I have long admired as one who puts its money where its, where its mouth is. I, I know there's backstories. We have them in synagogues too, of course, but we all have a range of, of our own difficulties, both personal and as groups. But as a group, at least from, from where I have sat, uh, I, I see a certain lack of hypocrisy. People who generally reach out do, do really good things for others with action, not just with words, uh, you know, with the help of, of pastors that you, pastors past and present. Um, so I, I did want to just raise a few questions um, because we always do that. We Jews are always about questions. And the, the truth is, is that we, we, Christians and Jews, obviously, and Muslims and Buddhists, and we have, uh, we, we, we know we all started from the beginning, but we have many, many different paths. Even within our own church and synagogues, we have our own paths uh, as individuals, but how we do that as groups, uh, is also so different. And, but in this time in particular, uh, who knew that today we would be on, you know, it's, uh, there aren't words for what's happening. I just, although I loved what, what Paula brought in terms of prayers for the other part of the world that is far away but feels so close because of all the, the access to how we can know what's going on with media. Um, you know, we, there's, it's so complicated, we're not going to wrap it up here as to how, uh, what the, how the misunderstandings lead to, to wars, how misunderstandings lead to problems we know in our own families is how difficult it is just to be able to communicate with each other. And that's why we need religion, I, I feel, because religion gives us a place where we can, where we have the opportunity to collect a good sense of values, a supreme sense of values, and be our better selves, and with a sense of humility <coughs> that we can't do it all ourselves, that we need others. <coughs> and <coughs> so there were some, there were a few different passages that came to mind, and then I. I wanted just to open it up to talk a little, have a conversation. Well, we all know the golden rule, and when we're looking for a common, a commonality, uh, we we often draw on the very well-known um, statement that has many iterations, and people often. Um, you know, we confuse them sometimes. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Yeah. So can anybody tell me what that is? So in the, so we have a different way, our in Christian uh, tradition and in Jewish tradition, we have different ways of saying what might be the same thing, but I'm not gonna say it's the same thing because they are different words. And so I wanted to just throw out that idea there are no right or wrong answers. Something just to think about this morning as we, as we are together. So we had Hillel, who was in Jewish tradition. He lived, he was born in 110 before the Common Era, and, and he 
Uh, somebody had asked him, what is the meaning of Jewish law or the Torah? And he said um, that that which is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow. That is the entire law. And the rest of it is commentary. Now go and study. So that's the original Jewish statement. I'll read it again because it is also, um, we're used to hearing a little bit of that sometimes reiterated later on in history as the negative, do not do unto others as you would have others not do to you. But this is the original one. It said, that which is hateful to you, do not do to your fellows. That is the whole Torah, and the rest is commentary. So then we have a bathroom. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, because <laughs> I don't want to speak uh, uh, for the Christian tradition, only from what I know. So it's attributed to Jesus in the book of Matthew. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Does that sound right? Yes. Okay. So, is there a difference? Mm. No. Well, hateful is quite a strong word, as opposed to um, the Matthew quote, which is more general. Uh, so it's that which is hateful to you. Well, what if it just bothers you? <laughs> it's not completely hateful. It's annoying. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's a little bit of a different um, approach, isn't it? A little bit of a different emphasis. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Does it matter? I mean, does it does it matter? Or do they say, is there something in common? Is there something different about what's being said? So, and you're going to have to speak up for me. Who I'm going to not the long one. Okay, I'm not the long one. That's it. Not in the long run. Not in the long run. Not in the long run. Yeah. Not in the long run. Okay, what do you mean by that? What I mean is, we're all. Well, it's hard to explain, but I'll try. What I mean is, One way in some place or other, and we better go on now or we won't later on. Okay. I don't think I'd be so clear. <laughs> Not clear as well. <laughs> Any other thoughts? These are wonderful. Right, so there's, uh, there's a commonality. I mean, I think this is what um, there is. And there's maybe a history behind why different words were chosen. We don't have time for all that this morning, right? This, the point is, is that when you raise a question like this, there's, there, there's no conclusion necessarily to come to. But, but th and I feel like this is a congregation that has run with the conclusion that, that no matter what, people are worthy. And, um, and we need to treat them with kindness. We, in, the, in the long run, what counts is, well, actually, if we put both pieces together, um, that, you know, that do not do something that's hateful, don't hurt people. And then I think the message of Jesus is often, at least from what, where I sit, the interpretation is do unto the others as you would have them do unto you. And the emphasis is on love, doing loving things. And so um, I think it's, it's very, uh, what, what I think the Jewish statement also originally says is the rest is commentary, meaning that we don't stop with just saying don't do what's hateful to others. There's more to be said on this. Christians have said more about this. Jewish rabbis through time 
have so much to say on this because if it's a conversation that ever stops, we, we lose our sense of humility about what still needs to be done. And that, I think, is such a, what's so beautiful about no matter which way you say it. So it just, these are just some, some thoughts um, what I, to, 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 to conjure with as, as we think about what's common. That we can also find more commonalities when we look at the differences between us two. And that brings me back a little bit to when you know, I come into the church. I haven't been here in a long, long time. I don't think I've ever been to a church service. So I'm feeling, oh my goodness, what do I do? Where's the right book? And it takes comfort to, to develop that. And the more we can um, be part of new experiences, be open to what others do that are different than that we do eventually, we develop more comfort. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we lose perspective on who we ourselves are. And it helps us to look at what different, the different ways we say things in order to understand each other better. So did anybody have any other thoughts on, on, on looking at those couple of phrases? Um, Martin Luther King Jr. said that Stella lived for his brothers in a dying schools. Martin Luther King said, we will not tell us how to get his brothers or he shall die, we will die as fools. Yeah, that's the bottom line, isn't it? <laughs> it's the bottom line. And there's so much that keeps us apart. It's important, it's important to have distinctions in life and to value our differences, but how do we do that and still maintain a sense of the commonalities? That's, uh, that's our, that's our ever-present uh, job. Um, I think Tom once mentioned how boring it would be if, every, if everyone was the same. And if we always agree, it, the richness in life is in our diversity. So I'm going to leave you with um, a poem. Uh, some of you may know I write poems. <laughs> in my, I haven't been able to sing as much in the uh, in these recent years, and so I've taken to some more of the silent arts. And I don't know if you, I'm sure you remember when the um, there was the shooting at the Pittsburgh synagogue, mm -hmm. and the, which ended in such a tragedy, and two of the welcoming folks who would greet people when they came into the synagogue had fragile X syndrome, which is the same um, disorder that my, one of my twins has. So it really hit quite close to home, um, because both of these gentlemen were killed. These were young men who were the greeters classically. They had a uh, they were incredibly friendly and warm and had been welcomed into their, their own congregation. And they, uh, you know, this is, they paid for that with their lives. And so I had written a poem called The Only Wisdom, a memorial poem for the Rosenthal brothers. <clears throat> and this is how it goes. The only wisdom there ever was or ever will be is a welcome. So when that ear-splitting gun spewed blood and danger, blasted through sanctuary space, obliterating beings, somehow the world was still offered a lesson in silent grace. Cecil and David Rosenthal, their anti-hate handshake of a warm hello, extended every Saturday to every friend and every stranger. So I thank you so much for welcoming me here to be with you on an interfaith Sunday in the, on the brink of such tough times in the world where it feels really meaningful.
grateful for me to gather with you uh, in a place where we can be different and yet share uh, such common, wonderful things. I wish you all well, and thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Our closing hymn is Bring Many Names, and it's uh, in the chalice number 10. Thank you.